Okay, so in this question, what we're going to look at is an object that is being rotated in a vertical loop or a vertical circle. The previous example showed you a horizontal plane uh, where friction is the um, thing that's causing the centripetal force. And in the other question, there was a car on a bank, and that shows you how the normal force or the vertical or the radial component of the uh, the normal force is what causes the centripetal acceleration. And in this case, we're going to look at what causes the centripetal acceleration for objects that are rotating in a vertical plane. So that's imagine that you're rotating this in a vertical uh, plane like so. Now, what we're going to do at this point is we are going to um, consider a situation where there's this mass that's attached to a rod and it's rotating at a constant rate of one hertz, one cycle per second. The radius is 1.5 meters and the mass of the ball is 3.5 kilograms. We are only going to consider the tension in this rod at the top and the bottom. Okay. We're not going to talk about it at this point here because it's quite complicated because there's gravity pulling down and the tension pulling inward. And that actually gets quite complicated to discover and figure out what the actual um, tension is uh, from that situation. It's possible, uh, but we're not going to do that type of question quite yet. So the question is, and you could try this, you can get a, a, an object like a string and attach a, an object to it and rotate it around. And I just want you to predict, where do you think it's going to feel the heaviest? Is it going to feel the heaviest when it's at the bottom? Or is it going to feel the heaviest when it's at the top during its rotation? Um, and another way of thinking about that is, what is the tension in the rod going to be when it's at the top versus at the bottom? Is it going to be higher or lower at one of those positions? So what I'd like you to do is, part of your prediction is just say, where you think um, will the tension in the rod be highest at point A or will it be at point B? Okay, so hopefully you've made your prediction. And now what we're going to do is we're going to draw the free body diagrams for both situations. So let's look at, at point A, and that's at the top. Okay, so at point A at the top, we're going to look at the free body diagram. So we've got the, the mass at the top. It's, I do this so that I think, okay, it's in a, it's, this is centripetal acceleration, so it's definitely in a circle situation. Um, so what are the forces acting on it? Well, we know that gravity is pulling down on this object. And we know that the rod is pulling inward on the object. Okay. And it's tangentially rotating in this direction. So the tangential speed is in that direction over there. So if we were to draw that, we could draw it. Now, the question is, which way is it accelerating? Well, of course, it's centripetally accelerating. It is always accelerating towards the center. So it's accelerating towards the center of rotation always regardless of what's happening that is always the case okay so now we just write out newton's second law it's radially accelerating meaning it's centripetally accelerating so we put an ac on there and we look at these some of the forces now i've chosen down as the acceleration so i'm going to make that way positive so i've got tension plus mg equals m ac the tension will therefore be M A C minus M G. Okay. And so that's pretty self-explanatory at this point. And I'm going to put subscript A, subscript A, because it's at point A. All right. Now the tension at point A is the mass. Now I could write this as V squared over R. But the problem is we don't have the speed. Now you could find the speed by two pi r over t because we know that it takes, if it's rotating at one cycle per second, one hertz, then it takes one second to make it make a complete circle. And if you know the circumference of two pi r, you could figure out um, what its speed is. So two pi r divided by the one second would tell you the, the tangential speed. If you know the tangential speed and you square it, you can divide it by r. You get this. You get the result. Or you can use the four pi squared. So again, it's gonna be four pi squared r f squared minus mg. And that came about because 
the tangential speed is 2 pi r over t, which is 2 pi r f. And we use that relationship here to realize that if we square the 2, it's 4. If we square the pi, it's pi squared. And then r squared divided by r leaves you with 1r. And then the f squared is there. So that is the tension at the top. Okay, and I'm going to let you put in the numbers for that to figure out what the value is. Now let's look at the at point B or at the bottom. Okay, now at the bottom, sigma F equals MAC. It's centripetally accelerating. What's the free body diagram? Well, at the bottom. You've got the mass. Tension is pulling up, but gravity is pulling down. Which way is it accelerating? Centripetally towards the center. So that's our positive direction. So when we write out our formula, it's tension minus mg equals mac. Okay, and this is tension at B. So tension at B equals M. Now, centripetal acceleration, I could write V squared over R, but what I'm going to write is the 4 pi squared R F squared. Add the MG because it's minus MG, and there's our solution. TB equals, and then you can get your number of newtons. I'll leave that as an exercise for you to just plug in the numbers and get your results. But what you're going to find out is that this number here and this number here are identical, right? The MAC or the mass times the centripetal acceleration is the same in both cases, that component of it. However, in this case, we're subtracting off gravity because gravity is helping it navigate the circle, right? At the top, gravity is helping it keep that circular shape. So therefore, the tension at A must be less than the tension at B. It has to, because in this situation, the tension has to be greater in order to compensate for the gravity that it's, that's pulling down in order for it to navigate that circle properly and maintain that perfect circle. Or you can think of it as the inertia of it. So, in the, so what you're going to find out is that TA is going to be less than TB. And when you plug in your numbers, you'll see that result. The worked example is also uh, listed on the website.